Hello, everybody. This is Lauren Hershey. I'm the senior pastor at Word of Life Church, and we hope this podcast blesses you and helps bring you closer to God. Enjoy today's message. Shall we feed on the Word of God this morning? You hungry? Praise the Lord. Will you believe with me for utterance, for the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to your word this morning. Thank you for utterance in the Holy Ghost, helping me to communicate with your passion, your will, your reality, your plan for each individual's hearts, their lives. Thank you, Lord, for opening our eyes that we might see and believe and walk in your wonderful love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's go over to Mark chapter 9. Mark, the ninth chapter, look at some things that Jesus said. Mark chapter 9, we'll look at verse 23. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said this in Mark chapter 9, verse 23. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So, Let's say it again. He said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So we want to get involved in believing, right? Because all things are possible to him that believes. Go over to Mark chapter 10 and verse 27. Mark 10 verse 27. Jesus looked at them and said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God... All things are possible. What? Let's read it again. He said, with man it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Now, some of us have had opportunity, occasion to be with a a doctor or someone like that in that role and said, it's too late, it's too late. Nothing can be done. It's too far gone. Or thoughts may come to your mind. Or you might be in a relationship. Uh, your, your dream has just slipped away and those thoughts come. It's too late. It can't be done. Well, for one thing, let's just recognize that when, when a physician, and God bless them. If it wasn't for, from physicians, I'd probably be dead today. You know, taking care of things, doing surgery, correcting situations. You know, thank God for the gift of medicine. Amen. Amen. I mean, if you ever had a kidney stone in the middle of the night, you would thank God for someone to help you take care of it to get that mountain moved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, what we ought to recognize when someone says nothing can be done, what they're really saying is, I can't do anything about it. We can't do anything about it. Because this verse tells us, with God, nothing is impossible. So something can be done about it. But they just, and I appreciate that. I respect that. We all have limitations, right? But let's, let's tweak our hearing a little bit and recognize what we're hearing. And realize that, say it with me, with God, nothing is impossible. And then the other verse that we read, Jesus said. He said, nothing is impossible to him who believes. So these things that, so I want to talk to you about this morning, and we're just going to take one step this morning, how to receive anything. How to receive anything. Because with God, nothing is impossible. And nothing is impossible to him who believes. So we want to talk about and, and understand and strengthen our heart. Have our heart, our spirit fed, our faith fed about how to receive anything. Hallelujah. Can you look with me at Matthew Matthew chapter 16, and guys in the booth, I didn't give you this verse, matter of fact, it's not in 16, it's 18, 
verse 19, Matthew 18, 19. Again, Jesus is saying, preaching, teaching. He said, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning, what's the next word? Anything. Anything? Anything that they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. Say it with me. How to receive anything. Now, let's go over. So, it's possible for God to get involved with your finances and turn your finances around and put you in short order in the best position you've ever been in your life. It's possible. It's possible regardless of the situation that your body is in. And, and in a little bit, we're going to be showing you a video from the, the guest minister, the guest evangelist, Jason Fath, who's coming in in a couple of weeks to great testimonies that will just show you again it's possible for God to get involved right in your body that he made, by the way, and fix it. It's possible. It's possible. It's possible. Nothing, it's possible. Can you say it's possible? It's possible for God to touch your heart, touch your kidneys, touch your liver, touch your everything, and fix it. You're made it out of the dust of the earth. You belong to Him, and He can repair whatever is the malady in your body. Say it with me. I'm a believer. Before we finish that, let me say it. But if you get in fear, if you get in fear about it, if we get in, in, in doubt about it, if we get to, if we swallow the word that comes to us that nothing can be done, if, if we, if we, let that image in our heart and mind that, that says, it's over, I'm washed up, it's curtains. If we let that be the prognostication of our future, and we come to believe that, we're going to have what we believe. But it's not the will of God. The limit, okay, let's go on. We Say it with me. I'm a believer. I'm not a scoffer. I'm not a skeptic. If God raised Jesus from the dead, he can quicken me. Do you believe that today? Why don't you lift your voices and just thank God right now and release your faith right now. Hallelujah. And let your thoughts expand. Let your vision expand. The possibilities expand. Hallelujah. God can do this thing. Come on. God can do this thing for you. Say it with me one more time. How to receive anything. Look with me at Matthew chapter 6. Well, actually, let's go to Matthew 7. It's, near, it's in the neighborhood. Matthew 7, again, some of what Jesus said about these things. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, he said, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds and to him who knocks it will be opened so asking is important asking is a part of this he says ask but i want us to understand this morning asking does not come first asking is important but asking doesn't come first look back to matthew 6 again jesus said in verse 5 He's teaching us to pray. And he said, and when you pray, he said, don't be like the hypocrites who stand in the street and pray just to be seen by other people. Yeah. They have their reward. That's what they wanted. They got it. That's all they're going to get. But you go in and pray in a private place. It's so relational between you and the Lord. So much a love thing. So much an intimacy between you and him. But he's saying to ask, but asking is not first. Look at verse 7. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them. Don't just think that. And, and you know, when we first moved in Dubuque, whether this was true or not, I don't know. 
But I heard of some places, and it might not have been in Dubuque. Matter of fact, it might even been other religions in India. You can tell it's been a few years. But they had a prayer wheel. Looked like a big roulette wheel with a clicker at the top. They would write their prayer requests down and stick them in little slots around the wheel and then spin the wheel. And every time their prayer went by the clicker, they would count it as a prayed again. I guess that was technology, <laughs> AI of the day. Jesus said, don't be like that. Don't think that you're going to be heard because you pray over and over and over and over and over again or confess over and over and over and over and over again. It's not like that. Then he says, he said, for your father knows that, notice this, for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. Your father knows the things you have need of. None of you should be, have to be struggling to pay your utilities. None of you should be struggling to pay your, your, your education bills, to, to do the things that the Lord has put in your heart to do or the, to cover the needs of your family. None of you should. And, and, and he says, your father knows what things you have need of. None of you, guys, young adults, married with kids, God's got you. You're going to have all the, God's got all the wisdom you need every moment of every day with your children to be their parents, to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You're going to do great. As you continue to look to him, you're going to have all that you need. Your father knows you have need of these things. Now, religion with some people, this, you'd hear this. Well, maybe we don't really need it. Maybe I don't really need it. You know, maybe, maybe. Maybe God just wants me to do without, live in lack, suffer through some things so I can learn something. No, the Father knows what things you have need of. You need to know you have need of them. You need to get that quirky, foolish, religious thinking out of your soul and become healthy in your expectations. Your father knows your father. He's a good father. He's not like an abusive father or a father that left. He's a good father. He knows the things you have need of before you ask him. And he wants to supply them. That's going to be important going forward that you understand that. He wants to supply them. He knows the things you have need of. See this verse. He knows the things you have need of before you ask him, but he still tells you to ask. So asking is important, but it's not first. Anybody want to know what's first? What comes before asking? Let's read on. In this manner, Jesus said then, in this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in, this, as, as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread. Give us. There's asking, right? But the asking came after the understanding and focus. After the asking came after the affirmation and focus on God's will. Our Father, who art in heaven, that's first. Hallowed be your name, that's first. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's first. Affirming who God is and His will. Focusing on His will comes before the asking. Until you've done that, you're not ready to ask. You're not ready to ask. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. See, a lot of the reason why, or I should say at least one reason why, there's a lot of confusion, a lot of disappointment, a lot of egg on our faces as believers, especially faith people whose prayers didn't get answered. We're bold to confess and then didn't have it. A lot of the reason for that faith, that prayer failure is 
We skipped over step one and went right to ask. We went right to confess. I've had people come in my office, and this has happened more than once over the years. I've spent an hour with this, 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 this couple. They want to be married. They're planning on getting married. They're happy. They're excited. They're, their love is in their eyes for each other. You can practically see the hearts going back and forth through the air. I mean, they're just delighted. It's, it's a great scene. I love it. Okay, I love it. I've spent an hour, you know, I'm, I'm, while I'm speaking with them and trying to figure out where they're at and how they've come to this, and my spiritual antenna is up because we're meeting together to see if I will and can in integrity before the Lord perform the ceremony for them. And so I've got to speak, you know, knowing the will of God for my life. And, and, and uh, several times I've had this witness in my heart that, yeah, I'll, I'll do the ceremony for them. So I tell them, I'll do the ceremony for you. Well, they're all happy, and they stand up. We get ready to pray to go because I pray with people to leave my office in that counseling session. And so they grab hands. I grab hands with them. More than once, as I've started to pray God's blessing upon this couple and their future, the Holy Spirit has stopped me dead in my tracks. With this rising in my heart, is this the will of God for them to get married? And I asked them the question. You guys have prayed about this, right? You guys, you guys have talked with the Lord about this, and you're, you're convinced and know from Him that it's His will for you to be married, right? You'd be amazed at how many people have never done that. Now, how can they expect to pray and receive from the Lord Something they don't even know is his will for their life. I'm glad you're thinking. See, they skipped over step one and went right to step two. Well, Lord, what school, what college should I go to? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The right question is, Lord, do you want me to go to college? What is the will of God in this? Step one is in We're talking about how to, what are we talking about? How to receive anything, anything. That wisdom that you need, that healing that you need, the finances that you need, the direction that you need, the the strength that you need from the Lord, anything. The housing that you need, the, the transportation that you need, the finances that you need to fulfill the will of God, anything. How to receive it. Asking is important. But that's not step number one. Step number one is understand what the will of God is. That's step number one in receiving anything. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 says simply this, Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, the understanding the will of the Lord is not too high for us. See, the, a, a large part of the body of Christ, boy, it's really quiet in here this morning. I could just tell you're receiving and, and eating this thing. Uh, good, good, good. Could you take some more? Okay, a large part of the body of Christ uh, has bought into this thing, has swallowed this lie from the enemy, this religious construct that you, we can't understand the will of God. It's too high for us. Or the only way to understand the will of God is through hindsight. Let's see, you can't understand the will of God through hindsight. Uh, to say that is to say everything that has happened was God's will. Well, I can tell you from the shoplifting I did when I was a teenager and spent the night in jail, not everything that happens in this world is the will of God. <laughs> Amen? Oh, I'm so glad to be saved. Can we agree? Not everything that happens is the will of God. So you can't understand by looking at what happened in your life or somebody else's. uh, Well, that was the will of God. No, because people are involved. Their actions, their choices are involved. So, secondly, we have a responsibility to find out and understand the will of God. Isn't that what this verse says right here? Be not unwise... Be not unwise. Don't be foolish. Don't be a fool. Don't be silly. 
to just go through life not understanding what God's will is. Listen, God has a plan for our life that is wonderful. It's good. It's good in character. It's just good. It's acceptable. It's well-pleasing, and it's perfect. He knows your gifts. He knows your graces. He knows your inclinations. And he's got a will for your life that fits perfectly with how you're made. There'll be a joy to your life that'll be fruitful and significant in this life and for his kingdom and other people. He's got a plan for your life. He's got a will for your life. Say it with me. God's smarter than me. Yeah, God's smarter than me. I mean, Eve didn't figure that out in the Garden of Eden when the devil came and said, well, has God said this? And, and Eve decided well, I've she went her own way. You know, the word lost or sinner in the Scriptures pictures a person that's gone off the main road. Some of us have done this, off the interstate, onto the federal highway, onto the state highway, onto the county highway, onto the gravel road. And then like we saw the other day, we came up to a sign that says, Unmaintained Road. We looked at that. It was a dirt road. Went down the hill and up a hill and disappeared into the trees. We couldn't take it because we had to get to the class reunion. But we both said, acknowledged as I turned around, I want to go there. (laughs) Well, that's just what the devil does. God has a plan for your life. But the devil puts something out there. I want to go. Your flesh says, I want to go there. Say it with me one more time. God's smarter than me. Yeah, and and so we want to understand the will of the Lord for us. We got a responsibility to recognize it, to know what the will of God is in our situation and for our life. And until we know the will of God in the matter, we're not ready to pray. We're not ready to pray. Let's go on. So step number one is to find out what God's will is about it before you pray. Listen, before you, before you do the Jericho march around something, before you sow seed toward it, number one, find out what the will of God is for you in the matter. In, the, in Young's literal translation of Ephesians 5, 17, it's, we read this. Because of this, become not fools, but understanding what is the will of the Lord. Don't become fools, but understand. Don't become fools wobbling around, stumbling around, not knowing where you're going, making poor decisions, wasting hours and days and years and finances on things that six months down the road will prove, well, it's not not working out. Why? Because God's hand was never upon it in the first place. So stuff has just been wasted. And I can tell you, you know, they say that near the end of your life, your, your, de- your years go faster. It's kind of like a roll of toilet paper. The nearer you get to the center, the faster it goes. You know, and it's just, it's, when you're young, it seems like, man, I'm going to be alive forever. But when, when you get on this side, 50 years goes very quick. Very quick. Somebody said the other day, well, you, you, they've reached a half a century. I thought to myself, yeah, and that's not that long. But your perspective changes. You don't want to waste it. You don't get them back. You don't get them back. Uh, Ephesians 5, 17, the Amplified Classic reads this way. Therefore, do not be vague or thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Can you say it with me? Asking is important in receiving anything. But asking is not number one. What's number one? What's step number one? Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Well, you know, and yet a lot of the Christians, well, you just can't know the will of God. Well, wait a minute. He gave you 66 books. And he put the author of the book in your heart 
to guide you into the truth. And then he called ministers and anointed them with his own Holy Spirit to teach and guide and unveil and unwrap and revelation to come and come and come. Why? So you'd understand. No good father delights to see his children wandering around, hitting their heads against the wall, doing without, making stupid decisions, and wasting their life and making fools out of themselves. No father who's sound-minded likes that at all. That's not your heavenly father. Your heavenly father is a good, good father. He knows what things you have need of. Before you ask him. But asking, he wants, still wants you to ask. But asking is not number one, not step number one. I'm going to ask you again. What's step number one? Knowing, understanding the will of God. Don't be vague. Don't be, again, read this. Look at this, the amplified there. Therefore, do not be vague and thoughtless and foolish, but understanding and firmly grasping what the will of the Lord is. Don't be vague. Don't be vague. Like walking around the grocery store pushing a shopping cart. And someone says, well, what, can I help you? Can I help you find something? Well, I don't know. What are you looking for? Uh, whatever the store wants. I don't know. You're just passive, waiting for somebody else to run your life and throw into your cart. You know, and get you to pay for it. I want to shop with you. <laughs> no, don't, I want the best for you. Love wants the best for you. But don't be vague. Don't be vague. Well, what do, you, what, do you, what do you want? You know, we're talking about how to receive anything. What's going on in your life? Okay, a few weeks ago, we talked about the Good Samaritan. We're all invited by Jesus and welcomed into the Good Sam Club. Right? Isn't that right? Luke chapter 10. Good. He said, go and do that likewise. You'll receive from the good Samaritan Jesus. Let him bind up your wounds. Hallelujah. Clothe you. Bless you. Receive. And not only that, then give you the resources. Like 2 Corinthians 9 says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you, say me, having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. Say it with me. God is able. He's able with you. Nothing's impossible for him. Nothing's impossible for him who believes. So we want to get involved in believing, right? Amen? Well, what do you want from the Lord? Well, just I just want the will of the Lord. Well, what is it? Well, I don't know. Well, find out. Find out. Do you want to live with lack all your life? Do you want to live, and I don't want to talk to us like we're all living from paycheck to paycheck, or if like that would be a financial increase for us. Some of us are probably there. I've been there. A lot of us have been there, but not all of us are there now. But do you want to live at, the, is it God's will for you to live on the financial level that you're at right now the rest of your life? Or what is God's will for you? Do you want to help people? Do you want to be a good Samaritan? Would you like to write a check and fund the whole pumpkin palooza? Yeah. Hallelujah. Nothing's impossible with God. Ooh, that might be a new thought to us. Well, good. And I don't know if that's God's will for you or not. But you need to know. So the first step is understand what the will of the Lord is. How many of you, and again, God's opened all these channels for us to understand His will. Let me ask you a question. How many of you are more settled today on the will of God for your life, what He wants for your life, than you were five years ago? Can I see your hand? Praise God. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think would happen in your life if you understood twice as much about His will for your life as you do today? If you knew twice as much about God's will for you. I think, it, do you think it would take you to a different place? Yeah, yeah it would. It would take us, take us to a different place. What place? Uh, it would take us to 1 John chapter 5. Would you go over there with me? 
1 John chapter 5, and we're going to finish here for today. 1 John chapter 5, we're talking about how to receive anything, and that praying is important, but praying is not the first step. That understanding what the will of the Lord is, is the first step. Oh, hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of Him. This is the confidence that we have in Him. The confidence. Not to hope so, not to wish so, not to wonder about. See, it's this right here that takes us out of maybe religious thinking or the thinking that we've been involved with as Christians and takes us right back into the Bible. Right back into the walking with Jesus. This is what God said about the deal. He said, if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. See, you really don't have a guarantee that if you're asking for something, and I'm primarily talking about in how to receive anything, you for you. You receiving for you. Of course, you can be a blessing to others the more you receive, right? The more resources you have access to, the greater blessing you can be to everybody else. I'm not talking about being selfish. This is prosperity with a purpose, good Samaritan. Prosperity with a purpose, not selfishness, not just to heap it up yourself. I mean, how many understand that's not the will of God? That just won't, God won't have God's hand of blessing upon it. But neither does God's hand of blessing rest upon you doing without everything that he says Jesus' blood bought for you. Amen. His hand of blessing upon, is upon us being sound-minded Amen. and having a right perspective about life Amen. and not just some quirky religious thing we bought into. Help us, Lord Jesus. This is the confidence that we have concerning him. That if we ask anything according to his will. Listen, I want you to catch this. as we lay this foundation here. If we ask anything according to his will, you're not twisting his arm. I want you to get that right off the bat. You're not twisting his arm. He longs to give you this stuff. You're not twisting his arm. It's his will. Healing is his will. Abundant provision is his will. John Wesley said this about the book of Proverbs. If a person if a person does this word, does the will of God, you can't keep him poor. Because as soon as he starts to walk in this, he will begin to accumulate. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, folks, and blessed is the person who trusts in Him. I've been young. Now I'm older. I've never seen the righteous forsaken and their seed out begging bread. I've always seen God's faithful to His Word. And to my life. Can I get a witness with me and Terry? Amen. This is the confidence that we have concerning Him. We're not twisting His arm. It's His will. We're not twisting His arm. He's your Father. He wants you to have it. He's wanting you to ask. He knows you have a need of it. He wants you to know you have a need of it and stop feeling guilty and wondering about, am I being, am I being unholy or worldly by acknowledging that I have a need for something? No, he's the God that gives us richly all things to enjoy. You mean God wants me to enjoy life? Amen. Yes. He does. This is the confidence that we have concerning Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Glory to God, He hears us. He hears us. And if we know, He hears us. Glory to God, what else do we know? 
we know we have the petitions. If we know He hears us, we know we have the petition that we desired of Him. We know we have it even before we see it. Amen. Even before we touch it. Even before we can spend it. Even before we can wear it or drive in it or live in it or give it to somebody else. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We know we have it. How, where does this confidence come from that we know we have it before we can see it? Because we prayed according to His will. (laughs) Hallelujah. Because we took step one. How are we confident that we have it? Because, friends, that's faith. Right? That's living by faith. That's walking by faith. That's how to receive anything. Like Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. How, how, where does this confidence come from? That I know he's hurt because I know he's hurt us. You know he's hurt us. And if you know he's because you prayed according to his will. You prayed according to his will. You know he's hurt us. So you know you have it even before you see it. Hallelujah. And so between the amen at the end of your prayer and the there it is, we walk by faith. And isn't that an interesting time between the amen and the there it is? Hallelujah. When they say to you, I remember years ago, in a Gospel Bill episode, a man named Nicodemus was going to be in a rodeo needing a new saddle. So he prayed and asked God for a new saddle. And there was a whole conversation about somebody walked up and said, Nicodemus, you ready for the rodeo? Yep. You got a saddle? Yep, got a, brand, got a new saddle. Really? Let me see it. Well, you can't. You can't. What do you mean you can't? Well, I thought you said you had a new saddle. I do. Well, let me see it. Well, you can't. Could have said, yet. Yet. Oh, but it's just as sure that you have it, as it, more sure than you, that you have it than if you'd have had it in your hand. Woohoo! Hallelujah. Where does this confidence come from? Understanding what the will of the Lord is. Glory to God. We've got some folks in this church that are great hunters. They're great hunters. Some of them hunt with a bow. Some of them hunt with, with uh, guns. But glory to God. Don't be unwise. Don't be foolish. Don't be out there walking around in the woods. Just what you hunting for, Bob? Well, I don't know. Whatever God's will is. How many of you know that hunter? He ought to just go home. He's just being a problem. He just <laughs> he just fogging up the woods. No. No, but when he goes out there, glory to God, follow me in this. He, he goes out there knowing what the will of the Lord is. Man, he's ready to take aim. He's ready to take aim. He's prepared. He's prepared. He's done his work ahead of time. He's assured in his heart. And so he's going out there, and he's looking, and he's knowing what he's looking for, And when he sees it, he takes aim, and he shoots, and he bags it. Hallelujah. This is the confidence that we have concerning him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know he hears us, blessed be God, we know we have what he thinks is best. No. We have what we ask for because we've already spent time ahead of time to find out what he thinks is best. That's already settled. Oh, glory to God. Anybody's heart get fed? Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for what Jesus has done for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With every head bowed, please, every eye closed. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He was delivered for our offenses. And he was raised from the dead because everything necessary to set us right with God was complete. And whoever calls on his name, Jesus, 
will be saved. Their sins are forgiven. Their past is wiped out. They get a brand new start, brand new life, become a child of God. He came to his own people, and they didn't receive him. But John chapter 1 says, As many as received him, to them he gave the privilege of becoming a child of God, even to them who believe on his name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, if you're here this morning and you believe what I just told you about Jesus, and you're ready to call on his name and let him save you, give him your life, let him be Lord, receive his wonderful blessings. We want to pray with you right now, lead you in a prayer. We're all going to pray together. I'd really like to know I'm praying with you. If you'd say, Pastor, you're praying with me. I'm receiving Jesus right now. On the count of three, would you raise your hand so I can see I'm praying with you? Then we'll all pray together. Here we go. One, two, three. Go ahead and lift your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Greatest decision you ever made. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Greatest, greatest choice you ever made. Led by God in doing that. Your choice, your will. Father, thank you. Let's all pray together. Say it after me. Dear God in heaven, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Your son, I believe you raised him from the dead, and he's alive, and he's Lord. So Jesus, I give you my life. Be my Lord. Thank you for forgiving me and making me one of your own. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can we celebrate with these? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed today's podcast, there are a couple things that I would like you to do. Hit the subscribe button, rate, and review the podcast. And if you'd like to invest in helping us reach more people for Christ, head over to mywordoflife.church and click the online giving button. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you again next time.